It's like the first question gardeners ask each other. What zone are you? I'm a zone five. I'm a zone seven. I'm a zone 10. What does it even mean? Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? Today, we're gonna to be talking about all things plant hardiness zone. We're gonna be answering the questions of what is it? Who made it? Why did they make it? And how exactly did they come up with these crazy numbers? First, let's talk about what exactly are plant hardiness zones. The short answer is we take 30 data points of extreme low temperatures for an area, average them, look at a nifty, difty little chart and say, based on what your average is, that's your zone. So let's add a little visual to help us all out. Basically, they take the lowest temperature that an area sees in a year, everywhere from the tippy tippy top of Maine, all the way to the south of California, and they basically trend those out over 30 years, which then they look at this chart, which goes everywhere from negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit all the way to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And they say, based on whatever your average number is, that's your zone. So therefore the average extreme low temperature, that basically is moved into 10 degree increments and that's your zone. And then they break it down a little bit further. They say, well, within those five degrees, that's your subzone. So the difference between a zone five and a zone six is just 10 degrees. The difference between a zone seven A and seven B is five degrees. And that is what your zone is. So who made it and why did they make it? So the plant hardiness zones were created by the USDA, AKA the United States Department of Agriculture in conjunction with Oregon State University. So the professors and students over at OSU are the ones who are doing the heavy lifting of writing algorithms and collecting all the data from lots of different resources to come up with these numbers. But the one who communicates it out to everyone and makes sure that this is a continued project is the United States Department of Agriculture. That's why it's called the USDA Plant Hardiness Zone. But why? Why do they make these plant hardiness zones? Long and short is it, it was just another way to help gardeners and landscapers be able to understand the climate that they lived in. So much of gardening, if you look at it from an agricultural standpoint, has to do with first frost and last frost. But many plants can handle cold temperatures, freezing temperatures, but it depends how cold it gets. And so the plant hardiness zones is trying to capture information to help explain how cold does it get. And this is why we need to understand if we're somewhere from zone one to zone 13, because this can be the difference that makes a difference for a plant to be able to survive the cold months of the year. And now that we know that we have this average extreme low temperature zone thing, like how did they make that? How do I know it's accurate for my area? So how they collect the data is a little bit different depending on where you live. In the Eastern United States, Puerto Rico and Hawaii, they use data from the National Weather Service and several state networks. But if you live in Western United States and you live in Alaska, they use everything from USDA Natural Resources Conservation Services, USDA Forest Service, US Department of Interior Bureau of Restoration, the Department of Interior Bureau of Land Management. And between all these different groups, they have stations that are collecting weather data. So that means that a lot of this data is the same data that you and I see on a daily basis when we're looking at the temperatures. But what the Plant Hardiness Zone project does is it basically collects just those extreme low temperatures in order to figure out your zone. And as you may have heard, a new map has just come out in 2023. And one of the big differences is the, is the number of stations that they're using to collect data. In our latest map of 2023, 13,625 stations are being used to collect data. And with a lot more data, we're able to get a lot more granularity on this newest map. Versus previous maps of 2012 and 1990, we are now getting zone definitions that get into half mile increments. One of the limitations that we used to have is that a whole county, a whole area of a state could be listed as a zone, but it really couldn't account for different microclimate. But now with this increase of data, we're now able to get even better data within counties, within cities. One of the big differences in this map is we're now able to get better definitions of places that are in the mountains versus that are not. Coastal areas versus on the mainland. So now we can see even with in my own county, I am a 10B versus typically a lot of the rest of the county is a 10A. So one of the great things about this updated map is that you can now get a better idea of your particular microclimate and have a better definition of what your extreme low temperatures would be. And if you're wondering about how you can go figure out exactly what your zone is, you can go to the link down below. It is, I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description below and in a pinned comment. And what's great about 
about this newest map is you can just put in your zip code and it will tell you exactly what your zone is. And not only will it tell you what your zone is, but it will tell you what that actually means for your temperatures. Whether you're going to be negative 50 degrees or plus 60 degrees at your most extreme lows. But now that you know your zone, you do need to know there are a few limitations to the whole zone idea. Of course, like we said before, it only focuses on extreme low temperatures. And of course, because your plant hardiness zone is defined by a 30 year average, it doesn't take into account the extreme lows that were way higher and might be actually warm for your area. And of course, extreme, extreme lows. They get kind of smoothed out when you get 30 data points, which means your winter could be warmer, your winter could be colder than what your zone actually says it could be. But now that you've got your zone, of course, this is only one piece of the puzzle. It only tells you your average for extreme lows, but it doesn't tell you anything about how hot it's gonna get. And there are other factors you should take into account because here's the reality is zone eight goes from everywhere from Washington state all the way down to Florida. So some things that you should also consider beyond your plant hardiness zone is your heat hardiness zone. This looks at how many days that you spend above 86 degrees. One of the maps that I really like and that I also suggest you take a look at is US Climate Atlas. This map can show you the granularity of minimum temperatures hit, maximum temperatures hit, and how much rain you'll get throughout the year. You can have fun with this map by comparing areas back and forth so that you can see when you're looking for guidance and advice from other gardeners, how similar or different is their area. And for those of you guys who live in the subtropics and the tropics, of course, one of the factors that I think zones very much misses and a lot of gardeners do not talk about is the sun. I always hear this a lot because people talk about heat tolerant crops and they fail down here in Florida. And really one of the big reasons is because we have such an intense sun. So you can check out EPAs, AKA the Environmental Protection Agency's UV index climatology reports, and you can see what your area's UV index is going to be throughout the year. You came for the zones. I know I gave you a lot of information, but if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, always, always, I recommend look for advice from people who live in similar zones, similar climates and similar areas to you. So if you live in a zone 9, 10, and 11 and live in a subtropical area slash slightly tropical area and you want to understand way more about the basics of Florida gardening or gardening in these subtropical tropical environments, check out this video right here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!